G Show, Peter G Show, Divorce Dad, Single Dad, Divorce Dad, Single Dad, Peter G Show. Oh yeah. Sunday nights. Sunday night right here, live in the Gulf Coast. I'm stoked. It's been a hell of a week. It's been a hell of a day. I did not want the day to end, but I am a responsible adult. How's everybody doing? Give everybody a couple minutes to get in there. Don't forget, we're live all over the place, and you need to subscribe to YouTube because YouTube's just a lot easier, I'm finding out, even though I was very adamant with the Facebook stuff. You subscribe to YouTube, you can comment live, you can do all that stuff, and uh, you know it's easier to see, and it notifies you, and there's no hassles. Facebook's not telling you what to do, what you can and cannot do, but it's all good. Anyway, I highly recommend. It took me a while to figure it out, but you know I was very adamant on, like, I don't need to go live YouTube, everybody does that. I had to be the, uh, you know, the rebel. I'm going to turn Facebook into a channel. I was like, yeah, how'd that work out for me? We're still there. Multi-streaming. If you're on LinkedIn, you can comment live too. Right here, Life of Peter G, the Peter G Show, live in the Gulf Coast. We're down in the uh, panhandle of Florida right now. Uh, and I like it. It's... uh. I don't get a whole lot of time here, but when I do, we were we managed to bring the show down here, and uh, a couple of we had to cut cut a couple of corners, but that's okay. Hope everybody's doing well. That's all I care about. You know, today I um today I went out to the beach, and the weather wasn't it wasn't really beach weather. It was kind of overcast. It looked like it was going to rain, but I wanted to see some friends of mine that were playing, and uh, and I had a really great time. It wasn't overcrowded. And I saw people that I just haven't seen in a while, some musicians that I've known since I was 17 years old, and, and, and I got real lucky, and they're all starting to play, and then I had to leave before the last set. It was an afternoon-type vibe at this outdoor uh, restaurant, bar, hotel, you name it. And, you know, naturally, last set, they're all going to get up and start playing, you know, friends that are standing there and all that, and, I, and you know, I got to go, Mr. Killjoy. It took a lot out of me to say goodbye and uh, leave so I could focus on this. But it's all good because I love this. Tonight's going to be friggin' awesome. Might be awesome for me because I, I I feel like I lived part of what I'm about to do tonight with Rob Fetters. But I think you're going to enjoy it too. And I think there's a lot of people that's going to just, you know, the trickle effect that's going to snowball because uh, I think there's a good portion. I'm... I'm I told you, I'm kind of featuring the Gulf Coast. I'm trying to bring some things that were very influential. Yeah, that's right. I love it, too. Uh, some things that were very influential. And where am I? Let's get some of these comments. Thanks. Uh, and to me, in this Gulf Coast, musically, so I said, let me do a few weeks of music. I don't do a lot of music stuff. And, I, you know, it's not that I won't, but I'm kind of versatile. I do what I want. But uh, I think this is going to be a great, hey, Pete. All right, the commenters are starting to comment. Don't forget, folks, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, when I bring Rob Fetters on tonight, which I, I didn't tell you. Hey, tonight we have Rob Fetters on tonight. That's right. That's the way I roll. Uh, but I digress. And you'll be able to comment questions or comments, but you need to be on, you really need to be on the uh, YouTube channel or the official Facebook Peter G Show. Or you need to be on LinkedIn because if you're on all my off pages on Facebook, it's hard for me to see all that stuff. I mean, I'm trying. I got six different monitors over here, but I got a big one that brings in, through, you know, the, the majors. And uh, if you have any questions, you're going to want to ask Rob. By the way, again, I have Rob Fetters, uh, the infamous Rob Fetters. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, don't know, Rob Fetters uh, used to be in a band called The Raisins, The Psychodots, The Bears, Talented musician just storyteller legend writer uh and and it affected a lot of us growing up uh they would come down here from cincinnati and play and it was just legendary for us and uh i think if you dig deep into his uh you know web pages and see all the music he's put out and all that it's just it's pretty uh 
magnificent. And we're going to get into all that. So I finally got a hold of him after 35 years. And uh, I said, hey, it's Peter G. And, uh, you know, and, and I want you to come on my show. And he's like, who? <laughs> but I get that a lot, you know, just little old me. Anyway, but after we kind of got it together, uh, he kind of at least, you know, made me feel better. Goes, yeah, I remember you. <laughs> It's like, and he's gracious enough to come on and do this. And I'm telling you, I uh, I will not disappoint because uh, I don't know. It's we'll t- we'll get into it, but that's coming up in a few minutes. Rob Fetter is going to be live right here. In the meantime, I want you to know. Last week uh, I took the weekend off, which was a first in a long time. We did uh we we ran a rerun, which is a first in a long time. But I got to start taking care. You know, Peter needs a little play time too. All work and no play. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, we ran a show, one of the older shows. And what was it on? It was on uh, narcissism. Oh, yeah. Because I can't go anywhere. We're hearing about some relationship problems where, you know, they're, they're, rela- they're in a relationship with a narcissist, male or female. I don't know where I was, who I was talking to within the past 24 hours. And I was hearing the exact same stories again. It's all over the place. Anyway, that was uh, good stuff for those who are in need Next week, I'm doing another musical feature. I'm going to feature these guys there the, called the White Tie Rock Ensemble. And they are a, I, I don't, you can just say a tribute band, but they're not a specific tribute band. They're here in the Gulf Coast. Watch them start up from the beginning back, you know, almost 10 years ago, probably. And uh, they do multiples. They constantly change the show up and they'll do like three or four different artists per show. And it's just spectacular. I mean, they're machines. These guys replicate, and they the, the production's amazing. They created an experience, and they sell out because it's you know good catalog of music. But they're not just doing a specific. They're not a Queen tribute band. They're not just a Journey tribute band. I mean, they they really these guys are talented, and they go all out and they do it. That's uh, going to be next week. The White Tie Rock Ensemble. I'm going to just I got questions for them because I know some of these guys. So I I, I want to throw some questions out there where we're going to find out about the what's going on with them where they're going where they've been how they started and uh and i got a couple you know curveballs for them too as always but uh that's next week but tonight's gonna be awesome again though i could not be here tonight oops where am i i could not be here if it wasn't for my beloved bolt energy bolt energy folks uh, if you don't have uh, bolt energy go to your stores and ask for it i'm gonna let pepsi and myself tell you about bolt energy and i'll be back in a minute hey everybody peter g from the peter g show and my friend pepsi right here hey hey we're here to tell you today about my beloved bolt energy bolt energy bolt energy electrify your senses did you know that pepsi i did not know that yeah electrify your senses bolt energy has no preservatives no preservatives no and it's enriched with antioxidants and vitamins antioxidants it's a cleaner energy drink cleaner that's right Nice. And, you know, a couple little tidbits you might not know, because I don't talk about it very often, but the Apollo mission, man on the moon. Man on the moon. To the moon, Alice. Bolt energy. Moon. That's right. Electrify. That's right. If you would have looked in their storage bins, what do you think you would have found? Bolt energy. Bolt energy. Ask for it in stores, Bolt energy, and tell them the Peter G. Show sent you. How's that? Hey, Peter G. All right. Peace out. Love you guys. Peace. That's right. Bolt energy. No preservatives. These guys are workout fanatics, and uh, believe me, they want to have a cleaner energy drink. And and I got to give them that much, you know, because uh, I, I like the way it tastes. I like it cold, but it doesn't give you any harsh crashes and all that. If you can't find Bolt Energy, go to uh, Bolt Energy LLC on Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. They're all over. Just Google Bolt Energy LLC, and you'll find them. They're growing. It's not easy being a Bolt. En- I mean, an energy drink. It's like trying to get a record deal. It's a ton of musicians out there. You just got to keep plugging away. But uh, as I've always said, they know what I do and they still sponsor me. So God bless Bolt Energy. Okay. So as I said, you guys want to start getting your comments in and all that. I strongly suggest you go over to YouTube. So I'm looking on my other pages and I see there's a bunch of people. It's going to be a while. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to get your popcorn. I want you to get a adult beverage or something right now, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video. This is one of Rob Fetter's newest videos, and I just fell in love with it. And we're going to crank it up. We're going to bring it in, and then I'm going to bring Rob Fetter's on, and we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. But this is pretty awesome stuff. I've, I, you know, I, I honestly I could have 
just done the whole show of his music because and and I, we'd be here for you know a year and a half uh, listening to music because he's got that many tunes that I love and, and have grown with and there's even more that I didn't even know because he never stopped playing but again it's been quite a while since we touched bass so here's what we're going to do are you sitting down I want you to crank it up get your drink and I want you to groove on this because as soon as we finish up then I'm going to bring the infamous there you go Nick's on YouTube like it like it watching me everybody's watching me I got I got my favorite lurkers they love to watch all right check it out this uh this is a tune I'm gonna bring in before we get Rob on the thing it's called turn this ship around it's one of his newer songs and it's an amazing video I again I I can't tell you how many times I've already listened to this thing and and finally decided you know what I'm gonna stick with this tune because I could never make up my mind I thought maybe I'd bring in something old something new but it was like it doesn't matter it's all him and it's it's every, everything is a story and it's just amazing so um I say uh, let let's groove a little bit. All right, check it out.
Wow. Rob Fetters, I'm in love all over again. <laughs> I'm telling you. Boy, I love you, Peter. I'm telling you, it's a whole new, you know, it just like refreshed me of what I've forgotten, you know. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rob Fetters, formerly, formerly of the Raisins, the Bears, Psycho Dots. You're doing a lot of your own stuff. I mean, I, I, the problem is, is like I didn't know where to begin, but I want to kind of begin from the back. But, 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 you're in you're in Cincinnati, right? Yes, I'm in Cincinnati. How, you've been there forever, right? Well, I, I grew up in Northern Ohio. That's where the Raisins started. Uh, we all grew up in a suburb of Toledo, Ohio, called Sylvania, and somehow we we just landed in cincinnati there were there were big recording studios here and uh we started living just in motels because we played so often here and our, our manager said why don't you just rent a place it would be cheaper and roots happened right i i mean i remember years ago again stupid stuff but i remember asking you is there really a wkrp and and you just looked at me and said uh no <laughs> you've got history you've got a lot of friggin' history i mean i'm this, extremely old hundreds of years old yeah well, well look we're all we're yeah but we feel good i mean we're all here that's all i can tell you but the thing is do you even have an estimate about how many songs you've probably put out um i actually no. i mean it's not as many as elvis costello or something but uh, you probably, think probably probably a couple well, it depends. I mean, songs on records. Yeah. Less than a hundred. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, personally, that I wrote, but, but yeah, maybe, maybe they're, you know, I, I can't answer that question. Okay. Okay. We'll just start with the question I can't answer. Well, well, good. Uh, no big deal because I'm going to throw way more, many more at you. It doesn't yeah. matter. You know, there'll be plenty more. We can, we can just, when I first, let's start from the beginning, at least from, from the Gulf Coast perspective. First time hearing about you, being with you. Are being around you, no, finding the raisins. You were in a band called the Raisins. You played a rock club here in Pensacola, Florida, called Machine Gun Kelly's. And all I know is when you guys would come here, maybe once a year or twice a year, something like that. They didn't bring you in very often, but when they did, the line was out the door down the street to see you guys. And it wasn't because you had production value. I don't know how the how the the mania picked up because obviously you guys had been here before I was even legal enough to get into a a, a bar, and and but when I, I remember the the first time I walked in the stage was dark you could see a bunch of stuff on the stage but it was dark and then all of a sudden the lights came on, and you were like this and and there was all of a sudden the lights came on and it was you plugging in an extension cord with four floodlights, and it was like. It's showtime. And then there was a ton of balloons, I believe mannequins. It was just like it was, you know, stuff you picked up along the road and put it on the stage and and that was, you know, your production. But when you guys started playing, that was it. It was game over. The energy, the musicianship, the songwriting and everything, that's what it was all about. You guys, it, you know, wasn't let you didn't, you know, you weren't wearing tuxedos or nothing like that. And it was just the music was friggin' fantastic. Whether you think so or not. There was some really good stuff there. We really learned how to be a band uh, in Pensacola. There was, you remember Machine Gun Kelly's, I think we played five sets a night. It was one of those kind of clubs, you know. Yeah, it, I mean, it was really brutal. And and we just, it was either die or, or, or just put up a really big fight and play our asses off. But it was all original. Well, it wasn't all original at the very beginning. Um, uh, but Pensacola was really one of maybe two cities that allowed us to sneak in our original songs. Um, I, I was thinking about it early times at uh, Machine Gun Kelly's. We would play an original song, but say it was by, we'd, we'd claim it was by Little Feet or the Eagles or something and just hope we could get by. Um, the kids coming to see us play knew they were our songs, but we were trying to fool the managers to think that we were still a cover band because that's what they had hired. But you were out the door. You, you drew, I mean, because believe me, I had my share of going to that club when I was growing up and nobody had lines out the door 
to the street, through the parking lot, to the street, waiting to get in on a Monday night. It was just friggin' incredible. We were, we were desperate for your love. That's all. Well, it, whatever it was, it worked. You know, I mean, the songs were again. I think when I when I think about because again, I've had time to let this all gel. I mean, all the songs you write and you guys wrote, they're all stories. They're they're they, you know they're just they they all got stories. I mean, people knew the words because now I'm really bad on lyrics, but I I I can tell you pieces of a million of your songs because I just they just they were stories. They started somewhere and they ended somewhere. You know, and you're still doing that. Yeah, we really all like to write songs. I mean, and early on, it, it wasn't really me writing the songs. I, I wrote a few, but uh, there was an, a, a keyboard player in the band for a while named Tom Toth that would write a song a day. <laughs> and, I, you know, I just watched this guy, this guy. just And they were really cool songs. They were really, they were, they were fun to play. They were neat. They were challenging. They were interesting. And... We weren't really, I, I don't want to say competitive, but it was just uh, mutually inspiring to see what we could come up with. So that's wow. what my songwriting started. Wow. Well, you guys had a lot of them and everybody came to hear your music. I mean, and and then uh, you, you guys, how did the record, the actual Raisins record come about? Well, we just, um, like a lot of bands in the in the early 80s we, we couldn't get signed by a, a a major label so we just made our own records no that, that that's what it was but uh, uh, our manager had a small label uh that some other bands had recorded on so we called that our label and we went to studio uh one of our fans our biggest fans was uh, adrian Ballou. We played in Nashville a lot, and Adrian used to come see us play there. And he got successful by playing with uh, um, Frank Zappa and King Crimson. Uh, and then David Bowie, <clears throat> I think I've got it reversed a little. Um, Zappa, David Bowie, King Crimson, he loved us and knew his way around the studio better than we did. So he decided to produce us. Or it's just friends deciding how can we get this done? You know, how can we, how can we fake it? Like we've got, got our shit together. But there were some guys from Cincinnati. I mean, you know, a lot of, like I had to move to LA. You know, I moved out of Pensacola to go to LA. It's like, and people, you know, Nashville, LA, New York. What, I mean, how did you end up like all these years you've managed to survive uh, in any, any way you want to look at it, but in your, the area where you've been in? Well, Cincinnati, um, really is was just a hub for us so you know we like in the bears we would play new york and la and seattle right. and and wherever um so it's, it's just good uh, it's a good hub in the middle of the country but it, cincinnati also has, has a long and storied musical history it's a really great city for music this is where king records was uh there's an r b scene here uh, that's that's really cool. When I, when we were younger, a lot of the 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 R and B stars were still living here. You know, the Isley Brothers are from this area. I mean, there are a lot of yeah. And, and, and the Dayton area, Dayton's just fifty miles north of Cincinnati. Uh, really great musicians were here, and thus uh, some really great studios were here. And uh, the studios weren't always recording hit hit songs, and in the in their downtime, they would they'd let the raisins come in and play and do demos and things like that. And I, I that's where I learned studio craft. I became friends, best friends with some really good engineers, and sometimes I just hang out at other people's sessions and and watch what people were doing. How many years do you do you recall that the raisins were together? Well, um, the Raisins actually started in the mid mid seventies in Toledo. Then uh, we lasted till about nineteen eighty four, maybe the beginning of nineteen eighty five. That's pretty good. I mean, so a lot of drummers. A lot of drummers went through there, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know how it works. Here. And, and um, yeah. a lot of musicians. A lot of people that. Uh, just had the good sense to get the hell out of the music business <laughs> right but but i mean again i i when i came here to pensacola i you know rediscovered 
little things, but I also rediscovered that I I have the original Raisins record. And and let me tell you, I don't only have the original Raisins record, okay? Oops. It's encased in a plastic casing for pres Ooh. for preservation. I've had this hermetically sealed. I mean, you know, not like the the plastic you get from the manufacturer. This is a thick plastic. So I told must have told myself how much I valued this vinyl. I mean, because the record's in great shape, and I took out the jacket, you know, because I had to, I've forgotten. I've forgotten what I've owned, you know, and I took out the jacket, and I opened up one side, and there's there's nothing on it, right? Could I? And, and But then I flipped it over, and it's like, there's all the words to the songs. All the songs are on here, and it's all the words. Handwritten by me. Handwritten. That's, well, if they didn't have, you know, printers, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have printers. You either had to do the typewriter. You wrote all this by hand. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, this is pretty. But they, the thing, liked, they liked my handwriting back then. Well, evidently so. But I mean, I was just like going, all right, this is, you know, the pretty cool stuff. I mean, for, at least for us. And believe me, I'm sure there's a lot of people in this area that probably have these two and uh, and are, you know, still holding on dearly because it's it's great memories. It's just just great stuff for at least us. You know, I know you've lived it and it was so. OK, let's go like this. What made you guys stop being the raisins? Like, you know, because you all still kind of congregated playing music, but yet you decided to kill the raisins name and go into different stuff. Well, um, we were getting ready to make our second record, and uh, it was this is this is what I remember. This is my story, <laughs> as, far, as far as you know. <laughs> and, um, the production wanted to focus us. One of the fun things, and probably one of the the big things that everybody liked about us in Pensacola, was that we didn't have like a a solid identity as to a a musical style. Because we, I mean, we were a little bit Little Feet. We were a little Steely Dan. We were maybe a little bit more the Clash. We we were we we had a lot of different like cylinders <laughs> operating and uh to market something you need to just have like if, if it, it's better to have something a little bit narrow for the beginning of, of marketing and that really pushed back against what the raisins were the raisins were a pretty you know it was it was a bunch of free-range chickens just pecking wherever we wanted to talented and, chickens and that was then that was what was fun about it yeah I would, I we would do a kind of a root, rootsy R and B song, and then something really new wavy, punky, um, following it, and and then who knows, go play like a weird version of Doctor My Eyes by Jackson Brown that no one would recognize, uh, except for the words. Well, could, but you, uh, you guys were uh, again amazing musicianship, and and here here was one of the talents I think you really really had. You'd break a string, and often. often I don't remember you even having a backup guitar back then. Okay, okay. but you ha you broke a string, and you would change that string. You were like a magician. You'd be talking on the microphone, and you'd be your hands. Everything would be going. It was like pay no attention to the hands behind the curtain, and you'd be talking, telling some whacked out story, and you know, who knows what, just like feeding the people, and they'll, and that string would be changed and in tune. I mean, lightning speed. It was just friggin' amazing. I mean, you were like, it was amazing. I never forgot that. I stuff. didn't know you were supposed to do it any other way. I just. Well, you're, look, I think it's safe to say you're a pretty unique individual, and, I, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you're really – this is how I refound you. You're doing this thing on online called Fetters is Cheap, and Paul is saying, thank you, Rob, for Fetters is Cheap series. It's been a great to hear your classic songs again with some of the new twists and new songs. Uh, also, shout out to Swanee, Tilly, and the Wonder Beagle. See? So there's people out there paying attention. So you did – one Saturday morning, I get up. And I don't know how, because I, I and, and Fetters is Cheap fell into my feed, and I'm watching it. And I'm looking, this is the first time I've seen you in years. And it was like Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse, except musical. <laughs> there goes 90 minutes of your life. It, it, not, was, more, more than 90, because I ended up watching it. It was, the, it was some anniversary show. And I ended up watching the damn thing, and I'm going, I got shit to do. 
and I'm watching your Fetters is cheap show, and it's like there's like something dropping a basket dropping down from the ceiling, and you're pulling out paper, and I'm and I'm going, what the hell am I watching here? But you were playing all your songs too. And yeah, well, you you we have a basket that had cookies for Tilly the the beagle, and also you probably you're referring to the cosmic cow. Oh, of course, I, I excuse me, pardon me. Oh, so, and and wisdom comes out of her ass. Wisdom. Yes. Yeah, so I, I I pull a little wisdom of paper with wisdom and and read them. Uh, again, I I I I just walked into that, and I it was like, what the hell am I walking into? And it was just it was bizarre. Great. Because you're kind of bizarre. I mean, like I said, you have a great imagination and your life, you're not of the normal human being. Let's face it. I mean, you know, there's you sometimes you got to give up this to be that. You know what I mean? God, I think that's the nicest thing anyone ever said about you're me. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I love you. you uh, know? Yeah. It's like, you know, because being normal is not, you, it, 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 it's, it's just not what, what entertainment's cut out for. I mean, in creativity. It's setting on a washing machine, and who wants to be a washing machine? Exactly. And I watched that damn thing, and then I ended up watching another one. And it was, it like, really, really shot my Saturday in a good way. But but uh, we're going to get into that. It, it, just, it just blew my mind, because I didn't know what you were doing. I haven't seen you in, in decades. And... I just lived off the past as you know, I we're doing, I'm doing my thing. I've been out hustling in LA and you're doing your thing and bad Bob. You're still with bad Bob, the bass player, right? Yeah, we, actually I am friends with every musician I ever played with. Uh, and occasionally you'll, you'll hear them on, on my tracks. It, it's nice to know they're all still alive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not all alive, and, and, but I'm friends with them too. Um, <laughs> They, 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 they come to mind. Okay. <clears throat> and, because, uh, you know, I got friends over here that are dropping like flies and yeah. it just, it, it's so sad, but, uh, but I, I'm going to tell you something because again, we were kind of crazy back in the day and we've hung out and even, like I said, I'm, you know, I try, I try to jog your memory a little bit, but we've hung out. And I remember Bob would always be standing off to the side and he was a little more of the intellectual or at least, he, you know, and he'd just be looking at me because we were, we were a little bit off, you know, we were off the hook. We were a little bit wild back then. And I just remember he'd look at me and go, and it was like, what the fuck? You know? And he'd just be looking at me with that look like, you, you know, you guys are, cause he was quiet. Bob, he's, he's so friggin' amazing. I mean, his feel, his groove and watching it even on this video, it reminds me so much of he's, he's still the same old guy, which is a great thing. Yeah. I, I know the, I know the look from Bob. Oh, the, good, good. Cause so it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. Yeah. Okay, because, you know, I mean, we were just having fun back then. It was carefree, and we were having fun, but Bob was always more pulled back, more, you know, he, he like, like we'd be doing things, but he'd go home. One of those deals. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like, he'd, he'd go to the hotel or whatever while we're still hanging out. You know yeah, what I mean? That, yeah, yeah, that's that's possible. Um, That's possible. Uh, at least it was when I was around. Yeah, Bob could take it to the limit too. Okay, but see, I, I guess I, I, maybe he didn't want, for his weirdness. Okay, but maybe he didn't want to be around me, the, uh, us. So you know, we were just a little bit out of control. And might have been sick of me. I mean, imagine you know, you drive, you're in a van with me for twelve hours, and then you play a gig. That's five sets. And everybody worshipped you guys, and and but yet you guys were the normal, just getting by band, right? Absolutely. Barely getting by. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how we all did. I mean, I worked yeah. locally and was barely getting by. You know, I was playing at Kevin's on the beach back then and 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 you know, and five sets a night, six nights a week, you know, and that Monday night was like the night that we'd open up and go watch you guys and but but you know, but what it all worked out. I mean, you know, just at least yeah. we played. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. So you moved on from from the raisins and you 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 just said no more raisins. Yeah, um, and and then uh, our producer Adrian Ballou, I I called him, probably weeping a little bit, just saying the raisins are this is just is not going anywhere. And uh, he said, "Well, great, let's start a band." So I was I was unemployed for about a minute, and uh, we we did the Bears, and the Bears were more of a focused band we actually before we even started playing or doing anything together um 
we charted a course and decided what we, what we wanted to do and 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 to make it give the bears an identity uh so so we did that and just uh the bears did get signed to a label a, 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 a subsidiary of irs records which at that time was fairly big label and and um made a couple of records, toured a lot uh, uh, around North America. Huge, long, like three months or four months on the road uh, tours. And, and th that was a killer band, just a really fun band to see. Uh, I, I know that band inspired a lot of other musicians I've, I've heard since. Wow. Some who came, became extremely successful. Um, and the bears couldn't really we did all i what i remember is we made our second record uh the label wanted us to be the opening act on a squeeze tour and we had been playing like non-stop for practically a year made a record hit the road again we were really working hard um you know, maybe that's the one thing I, I I never really thought about, but I was talking to Bam Powell, the drummer for the Raisins, right, uh, a couple of months ago, and what he said, what the difference with us was that we really worked. I, I mean, everybody in the band had a really hardcore work ethic. No matter what, uh, we'd show up and and do our job. So the Bears did that, and we hit a point where we needed a break, and we told the label we didn't want to open up a tour for Squeeze, and we got dropped. Wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, so Adrian did, made a solo record, and that got things going for him. So the remainder of it, uh, Chris Arducer, Bob Neiswanger, and myself became Psychodots. How'd you come up with that name? Um, a person in the audience, a girl in the audience just said, you're psychodots. Cause wow. for, for a few months we were calling ourselves the raisins and it didn't really feel right. Uh -huh. uh, and she said, you're psychodots. Wow. And that appealed to us because it, it reminded us of a pleasant psychedelic experience we, we had shared together. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> uh huh. Early I in our lives, 55 times. Okay, so I mean, so then everything like with Bam, Bam Bam Powell, your drummer. Yeah, he was the only drummer I ever knew in the Raisins. Prior to that, you had what was the, another drummer? Yeah, we uh, there were there were several, but Chris Arducer was one of them. Okay, and, and uh, Chris Chris got really burnt out on the road and went back to uh, Toledo, went to college for a while. Wow, uh, there were there were there were there was some action in the early days where raisins would quit and go to college really and then just like too much shy of getting the degree would quit to join the raisins again that, because we talk that, about quitting school is that like going to facebook jail or something like that i mean like that yeah wow i i i just i just remember briefly having a conversation again between you me and uh, one of our friends and we were talking about you could the, the previous drummer that there was you know we were talking about uh, you know, Bam being in the band, that's all I remember is him. And then all of a sudden you went back, you know, you're interchanging. You guys are always intermingling with all your other musician friends. Yeah, it's uh, very incestuous. Yes, See? it is. It's a. Uh... Yeah. But Bam, and, Bam is, is just a fantastic musician right now, creating yeah. really cool music. He is better than ever. He's always been able to sing like a bird. And. Wow. He's, he's really got it together and he's playing with Bob and uh, it's funny. And they're playing with, uh, with uh, Scott Covrett, who was a guitar player in Sylvania, Ohio, which I mentioned earlier. And Scott was, I idolized Scott in high school. He was a couple of years older than me and uh, just a, a fantastic guitar player. And Scott was in the Raisins for a while too. So but we played together probably if we live long enough, we'll play together again. Uh, you, but you had a keyboard player. Yes, Rick. several. Rick Nyheisel. Yes. Um, uh, now known uh, as Ricky Nye, who is a Berkeley College of Music 
trained professional keyboard player with a real boogie woogie band and uh absolutely a master uh, right now right now i'm thinking of this advice i've you know i'll give the young musicians it's it's like always get in a band with people that are better than you yeah that know more than you do they can you know play uh, that's just a really good thing to do and i realize with the raisins <clears throat> i played with some really good musicians yes you did and it's so it 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 made you think i was better than i probably well, was. i, 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 I want to use the word unique you know, it, Unique. You, you weren't the standard. Let's put it that way. I mean, it, you know, flip flops, camo pants and, 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 a, and a Hawaiian shirt. And you were there. You know, what I mean, <laughs> cheap clothes from a surplus store. Dude, it wasn't about the clothes. It was it was yeah. the, the play. The musicianship was friggin. It, it, just, it just was, you know, it, you weren't fooling anybody. Everybody loved you guys. I mean, and, and the and the personal touch. I mean, again, the, the warmth of of knowing to how to entertain. I mean, that's a lot of things that a lot of people don't, don't know how to do. You can be a great musician and have no personality whatsoever. You know, yeah, and, a few of those. I try to stay out of groups with people with no personality. Uh, yeah, well, and, but there's a lot of that and they're great players, but there's just, it's just blase. Yeah. And uh, you guys, it was everybody, whether you were referring to bad Bob or Rick or bam, you know, whatever. It, it's like everybody fed off of everybody. It was, it was, it was great. That's the kind of stuff you live for. I'm uh, at least I think in a band. Yeah, and, and that, that vibe uh, continued in the Bears. Uh, the Bears were pretty, pretty into that. It's probably just comes from you know, seeing performers we really liked when we were really at a, at a an age to be influenced. It was. I mean, I didn't know I had any musical ability at all when I f first saw the Beatles. All I knew was they, they were the first adults I'd ever, adult males I'd ever seen who looked at like they were really having fun at their jobs. But uh, I'd like to try that. I wonder if it's hard to play guitar. So so up until just uh, hours ago, you uh, you made me read your bio because I didn't read your bio because I went to robfetters.net. My bio. Oh, oh I did. I did because you were telling me things that I didn't know. You must read my bio. Yeah. Read this if you want to live. Uh, yeah. So it's a book, you know, I mean, it really, if I, I could read that bio on this show and that'd be the whole interview over because it's telling everything, things I did not know about because I thought I had enough to ask you questions, you know, and, but you got to remember, we haven't really seen each other remember or not in 35 years or more. And you've done a lot of stuff in that, in between that time. A lot of pivots in there. You've gotten married. You have four grown kids. Yep. Uh, that's your son playing on that video. I met my wife in Pensacola at Pensacola in Pensacola Beach at Kevin's when the Raisins were playing there. I met there Swanson, known as Swanee, who a, a whole lot of people in Pensacola know and remember fondly. And um, <clears throat> we fell in love and I did a terrible thing and talked her into moving to Cincinnati and uh, we got, we got married and we've got four really cool kids. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're happy. Generally I'm happy unless I start worrying about, and unless I become, I, you had a show last week about narcissism. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You don't want to be a narcissist. You don't want to no. think about your no, uh, but, but here's the thing. All, you're still here. Look, you got four grown kids. You're still married, which is a feat within itself. I mean, you're married. So it's safe to say you're married thir 30 years more. You, you told me. Oh, yeah. you're, okay. That's, that's, yeah. you know, I just got through seeing a few people on the beach today that have been married a long time. That's almost like gold star material. It doesn't happen anymore. Everybody quits for the minute. There's a bump in the road. Yeah. And I, uh, now we're getting into Peter G's show. Uh, well, we so, are. We are. But the thing is, that's great songwriting material, you know? Yeah. Well, Swanee and I, I mean, we we laugh a lot and we argue a lot. And a, a couple of things that we learned along the way, really at the same time, um, during an argument about something, one of us said to, to the other, you know, I can't read your mind. You've got to you've got to use words and express them to tell me what it is you want or what you think, 
or how you, how you're hurting or whatever. And it was a it sound, it seems stupid, but it was just a revelation for us because I think when you're with somebody for five or ten or fifteen years, you think you've developed some kind of t- uh, telepathy, but but we 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 don't have that. We have to express ourselves to each other. And uh, the other thing we both have learned and agreed upon is that uh, I cannot, I am responsible for my own fulfillment and happiness. (laughs) I can't blame, uh, you know, if I'm unhappy on anybody else, I mean, I'm making some decisions and some choices and vice versa. And that's part of our deal too. Uh, we, we can't, you can't keep blaming it on the other guy. Um, that, that thing, uh, in, like in love songs, you know, like I, I was incomplete until you, I was, you know, we are not two, we are one. I don't know if we really buy that, you know, we're, we're just, we're two and we're, we're stumbling forward. Let me ask you something. I saw a picture with you in front of a, like a big giant Buddha or something like that. Are you guys spiritual? Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Just asking. What holds you guys I together? I don't know what di- the difference is between spiritual and anything else. I mean, it either is everything or it isn't. Um, I was in Hong Kong visiting my daughter who was uh, doing a, a semester there uh, of college. And uh, it was really cool. So wonderful. About uh-huh. four, four years ago. Okay. Um, before the recent troubles. Uh, it was right. fantastic. <clears throat> Ran in Victoria Park every day. It was just great. But um, I, I practice, uh, I've been practicing Zen meditation for a long time, which is probably the least dogmatic of of any sort of re- religious thing, uh, I'm I'm fairly agnostic, but I, I think I think reality is pretty cosmic and cool. And I isn't is that spiritual? Well, if you're doing Zen and this and that, you're following something to to you know. And I have to ask this kind of stuff because it, again, it takes a lot of work. Being married is not easy. I mean, especially you know, it's like people can think the grass is greener on the other side. Now, again, I don't want to be shifting gears, but I think this is the magic behind this whole deal. You, I think what we're talking about is way more interesting than music. <laughs> yeah, well, that's. I want to see my music go to Rob Fetter's. Dad. Well, we're, and well, that's the thing, though. I, 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 I cleverly lured you into my, into my, you know, into my uh, dome here, but it is. It's fascinating because, again, to be married for that long, to be able to do music, to raise four children into adults, uh, to to still love the person you're with. And I can tell, man. I, I mean, maybe you're doing it for the videos or whatever, but she seems kind of cool. You oh, know what I mean? Really cool. I'm, I'm pretty nuts about. Uh, well, and you're pretty nuts anyway. I mean, you know, in a good kind of way. Right. You are. You are. You're, let's face it. I mean, I don't know. I don't have the word to explain you to express how you know. But you're, you're, you're just a go for it kind of guy. I think you know, and you, you approach things differently than a lot of people. You know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's probably why you know I smash into walls fairly frequently, but get my pick myself up and dust myself off. Um, yeah, I, I think I think another thing uh, Swanee and I have is that we're not really we're not really jealous of each other's friends. Uh, like she is still, you know, she has good relationships with with uh, you know occasionally talk to an old boyfriend and 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 i'll do the same we're just uh we don't feel like we own each other i think we we really respect each other and we respect each other's um right to be independent and and uh go for whatever they want for fulfillment in their life and we also, I think, well, I know I learn a lot. She just teaches me a lot of stuff. You know, she uh, does. She does. I mean, if, if yeah, she she lets me know things that maybe maybe uh, she 
I have blind spots, and she lets me know what they you know, I firmly believe that people complement each other. I mean, there's, you know what I mean? She's got strong points. You've got strong points. But but again, one hand washes, as my father would used to say, one hand washes the other. And that's a cool thing. I mean, uh, Paul is asking, uh, was she doing Shake and Street, your, your idea or hers or something? Was doing Shake and Street yours or her idea? Okay, well, Shaken Street is is a cover song of an MC5 song, right? On my new album called Ship Shake, and when we do it live, it just uh, when we were recording it, um, the MC5 is credited for writing the song, but the guy that sang it is uh, Fred Sonic Smith. I think he's probably the main instigator of that song. He was a member of the MC5. And he was married uh, to Patti Smith, the poet and mm -hmm. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member, um, who I'm a big fan of. And uh, when I was recording the song, and the reason I recorded the song is because I had been playing it at some house concerts, and people had never heard of the MC5, and it just pissed me off. I said, God, how can you? Because the MC5 to me were... I don't know. I guess like the Raisins were to you. They were an important band and, and uh, Detroit-based band that never got uh, mega famous, but a very influential, cool band. Um, so anyways, I recorded the song and I thought, boy, it would be really cool to have Patti Smith sing this. But I didn't know how to get a hold of Patti Smith, but Swanee was, you know, downstairs. <laughs> right, right. And she could sing. So... I got her. I, All right. Uh, Reed, Reed Duke it says, uh, Reed Duke is saying, uh, the lead in the song, Your Song is Mine, is one of my favorite of all time. Thank you. One of mine, too. Really? I, I, where did that come from? It, it just came from playing it a lot, playing it in places like Machine Gun Kelly's. Right. You know, and, yeah. and getting it right, like getting that that thing right getting I, I know i know that you guys made fear is never boring that became like one of your traits and stuff like that does that drive you nuts because you guys got a million songs i mean it was a great song but you have so many great songs i feel yeah um i there was a point where when a fear is never boring was uh i don't know if you guys know this in pensacola but like regionally in cincinnati it was a number one song <laughs> number 1983 and we which is very exciting, but uh, there was a point where, uh, you know, I would say fear is never boring unless you've had to play it a thousand times. <laughs> but well, tell the stones that, yeah, yeah. but yeah, Barney, but I, I stopped feeling it th that way. I, I, re I like the song, it's actually it's, it's kind of it's a hard song to play, it's real fast and yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, I also like the fact that it's uh, the uh the lyrics are uh, have a little bit of shock value yeah they're all over the map there's no uh that's yeah. a weird, that's a like a, a weird story yeah. not one of you know continue occasionally when someone hears that song they think it's offensive so um that's cool you know <laughs> uh so okay so you guys again you, you you've you've learned to uh to get you know st hang in there through the bumpy road you and your wife swanee and raised four kids uh who's who's still living uh around the house or at the house or uh you got any or are they all gone uh, there we're empty nesters Ooh. uh during the pandemic uh uh two uh our youngest and my and my daughter uh one of the twins uh lived here in an interim be because they were like in between jobs and right and cities so so we had them back for a while which was really cool i mean the pandemic for uh for the fetters family was just like it was for everybody else it was uh what the hell's going on how long is this gonna last right what do we do and uh but uh yeah the kids it's they're they're all gainfully employed noah fetters uh i work with the most because he's a drummer. He played on Ship Shake. He was in that video. Yes. And Swanee was in the video too. Um, yes, I noticed. And uh, 
all those videos are on my website too if you want to see those again um oh, yeah we're gonna get to all of that because um again it's like this is the problem there's so much history in you that it, it just i told you this would be a you know three hour show and and I, there, as many and there's so many different directions so many streets we can go down again the personal which I really like. I think people really love to hear that stuff because it's not easy. You know, th this is why people quit in everything from relationships to music to whatever. But oh, some sure. you're so I, I was thinking about this on the drive in today. And, and it's like, I personally feel regardless of what you may think, you're pretty blessed. You know, I mean, it's you're still here. You're still doing music. You've managed to keep your relationship together. You've managed to raise four kids, which is, you know, I got one and it's. I mean, she's cake, but it's still not easy. It's financially tasking and, you know, things like that. And Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. P I mean, parenthood was <clears throat> parenthood continues to be <sighs> a, a real ass kicker. There's no way to be a cool dad. I figured that, that out when my kids were teenagers. Hey, you oh, your dad plays guitar in a band. Wow, that's cool. Oh, no. Did your writing change after you started having kids? I, well, I think, I think writing, yes and no, I, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's a craft you keep working on. Um, it's nice to be able to write love songs about your kids, which I've, I've done. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, back to an, another thing about uh, Swanee and I, we were able to spend time with my grandparents uh, on my mom's side, my maternal grandparents, Gladys and Mark, who lived to be 98 and 99. And uh, they were a blast. They were, they were very different people. Uh, my, my grandfather was a real walking, talking Christian in the best sense of the word, you know, a person that just did self-sacrificing good things and and worked uh and not to say christians are the only people to do that but he was he put a good light on it um he was not, he wasn't a bigot <clears throat> or anything uh but my grandmother was much more of a skeptic agnostic and they argued about that and when uh they had their 75th anniversary uh the a, a little newspaper uh sent a reporter to do an interview with them and ask the secret of their long marriage. <clears throat> and Gladys, my grandmother said, well, we argue every day. <laughs> and I, I just think, yeah, it, it's okay to argue. You have to do it in a band. I mean, you're not going to have a good band unless you're, but that's why a lot of great bands break up because they, they do argue, but then they say, screw you. I'm out. Yeah, it can get it can it can wear you down. I think if the, if respect is is taken away and pressure. My mother and father lived into their early nineties up until the past three to five years, five years, uh, and and they argued like Fred and Ethel. And there was times when I'm going, "How the hell did you guys ever get married?" But they 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 came from a generation to where you brushed yourself off and you just put it aside and remembered why you were there, which nobody remembers that stuff. You know, yeah. they just say, screw it. I quit. Quitting is easy. Mm -hmm. Really is. But here again, example, you're still here. Knock on wood. Uh, knock, to, knock on wood. I better behave myself. Let's move forward because unfortunately this sucks because time is just flying. I want to talk about, so I'm checking you out in the future. Now you're doing house concerts. Like you go to people's, <laughs> I'm going, he's going to people's like, you're doing events at their like like a, at their, you know, I don't, how does that work? So we don't have very much time. So the, what, what I did after, um, uh, when we started having all these kids, I realized I couldn't make enough money in the bands to support a family. I could always make enough. I could always get by myself. You know? Right. Right. Um, you know, um, but with, you know, thinking about sending kids to college and stuff. So I, um, I did a detour into commercial music and became a commercial music whore. And that turned out to be um, a really good move just to uh, learn skills. I, I learned how to orchestrate. I learned how to produce and sound like any number of musical bands. I mean, I, if I, if I, if, 
ABC television needed uh, something orchestral for the Oscars. You know, I could do that. I, I always felt I had an imposter syndrome thing, but I had to do it and I, and I would do it so I could sound orchestral. I learned how to sound like ACDC if I needed to sound like ACDC um, or a 20s band uh, playing in a Paris bistro or, you know, all sorts of things like that. And I did that, and uh, when I, uh, especially uh, a, a few years ago, uh, uh, I wanted to play in a band more. I wanted to perform more. I had more time. Uh, the uh, the crushing college bills were, were were not so intense, and I wanted to play a lot. And something that I learned uh, from a, lo uh, or I remembered from a, um, a guy that managed a tour once. I was on a, a tour with Adrian Ballou in the early 90s, and this uh, the tour manager was named Lenny. And he was uh, he had been a security uh, guy for a David Bowie tour. That's how he ended up. And then he, he just managed this tour. So remember, he was very opinionated, and he was a New York City cop. <clears throat> that was his background. And driving across Kansas, which is forever, you know, 10 hour drive across Kansas at 10 o'clock at night, everybody's asleep in the back. I'd be in the front seat and I'd be talking to him. And he would, and he, he, he really said this to me several times and it's maybe something he saw in me. He said, you know, everybody wants to be big. You know, he'd been on a Bowie tour. He'd been, a, he'd been around the world on the sound and vision tour and stuff. You know, everybody's aiming big, big, big. Nobody's thinking small. And it started, I started thinking about that. You know, what's the point of being big? What's, you know, where, where's my bliss? What do I really like to do? What I really like to do is make up, I like to make up shit. I like to write songs. I like, I like that, the, like the peak music experience for me is I've written a new song and I'm about maybe two thirds through it. You know, the last third is the hard the work you know the first two thirds are just inspiration this is cool i'm you know right. you're riding this horse or whatever you know right. not falling off this thing's going somewhere and you think it's the best song in the world so i knew that was my bliss which has nothing to do with what i'm getting at but sure it does <laughs> um if you stop thinking about you know money as being your goal you know yeah got you know enough i'm not going to starve i'm going to pay you know i'm going to pay the mortgage or whatever things are cool um i'm not going to buy a lamborghini so things will be cool i i don't need the ten thousand dollar les paul i can find a used one for three thousand you know my my frugal existence you know yes um which i was the way i live um but i was thinking about lenny you know think small think small and a couple of friends of mine had said, said, you know, Rob, I think you would love to play a house concert. And, you know, I said, what's a house concert? Well, you go in somebody's living room and there are 25, 30, maybe 50 people in it with an acoustic guitar and you just play your songs. And I thought, oh, God, I, I mean, I'm cool with acoustic yeah. guitar for maybe five songs, but I'm an electric guitar player. And as I learned more about, you know, 21st century technology, you know, because I'm it, it, a studio cat and I'm dealing with DAWs, digital audio workstations, kids, and, and digital music and everything, and, and realizing things are getting smaller and smaller and sounding better and better, I realized I could probably figure out a way to do almost play Rob karaoke and take my records, uh, remix songs, take the lead voice and guitar out of it. So I could play that live and do that in, in a house concert setting. And I tried a few of these shows and as much fun as it's, it, it, it is to play in a band to thousands of people, which I've done, you know, or, or, a hundred people in a kick-ass, you know, small bar right, right, right. cooking, you know, yeah. that is, that is a great thing. 
I, I felt like the uh, satisfaction more on a like emotional art level of playing these very small audiences was was like it was more of a peak experience and it's because you're really you're you're actually in the studio with people you bring in your studio into a, somebody's house everybody's comfortable they've got they brought their own drinks they're drinking what they want to drink generally people aren't yelling in their ears drowning out it's it's the most wonderful attentive audience i've ever played for but who would have thought of that who thought of that i wouldn't have but some yeah. people you know, people figured out and I just tried it. So that's what I was doing. And Swanee and I were doing uh, for about a year and a half before the pandemic hit. I was still doing some uh, occasional commercial jobs. Uh, but we were, you know, we played in Florida. We played in the East Coast and all, all over the Midwest. We went all the way to British Columbia. That's insane. Uh, Fantastic gig at a, a cannabis farm and yeah, <laughs> in, uh, in British Columbia, uh, 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 yeah. I have a very small audience and it was just exquisite. It was so much fun, um, beautiful people. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and uh, so that was our big discovery. And then the pandemic hit, and. <clears throat> I guess uh, the benefit of being a musician who's just had to pivot a lot, you know, you, you, the drummer doesn't show up. <laughs> oh, wow. Who in the audience can play drums? You know, that's just kind of sometimes the way you have to work. Um, uh, it was like, what do we do now? And my son said, why don't you do a live stream? And I had, I had never wanted to do a live stream, but I realized I could do a house concert live stream in my house. Yes. And, and really the only thing I had to get over was what you already are familiar with was dead air. Dead air. Yeah. Dead air is hard, but all it takes is a little imagination. You have to be nuts. <clears throat> You've got to be a little bit nuts. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hi, my name is Peter. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it's good to meet you. <laughs> Again. I'm Rob. And yeah. I'm nuts. <laughs> Hi Rob. Yeah. 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 Um, well, somebody said uh, called it called me insanely driven. Yeah, well, you know, but 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 it's the belief, it's the entertainment belief. Let me tell you something. Sure. When this COVID hit, all these nighttime shows, the the late night shows, had to bring it on home. It, Jimmy Fallon's, Stephen Colbert, they couldn't do it. They uh -huh. couldn't. They <laughs> were horrible. They it's like welcome to my world. Yeah. They sucked and they had millions of dollars behind them and they could not talk because they were so used to feeding off an audience, having it written out before them. They come on, they just do it. And it was like they were naked. It was interesting. But I had some help. I mean, all, the whole thing of being solo is such a, for me, it's such a myth because there's so much support. So um, my son Noah is very good technologically. I have a friend, uh, Gordon Rankin, who like invent stuff, audio stuff, and they helped me get it. So we got, it got it sounding pretty good um, on, on these live streams. And, you know, after the, the first few, I got into it and then I really got into it. It gets easier. It gets better. You know, but we've had three seasons. We call them seasons. Well, um, how many, how many shows per season is there is a federal? Uh, I think yeah. there were 13 and then 10 and then 12 and <laughs> season four is coming up in July in august so i'll be playing live every saturday night and Not, uh july 10th through august 28th that like, goes out to youtube um no we're uh yeah excuse me we are doing it on youtube uh youtube and they're free there's no paywall or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. and in the middle of it i stick my hat out and you can people that can afford to can uh be patrons and uh-huh and I share the proceeds with the other musicians that are playing on the tracks. Uh -huh. And last year I was sent it, it was, I really, it was kind of amazing. Enough money was coming in and I was sending money to musicians all over the country because last year for musicians was, was the greatest depression I've ever experienced. Sure. sure. And I, they've, uh, we've ever experienced. Yeah. Uh, I, and I know people, in uh, the service industry has experienced it too, but to not be able to play period. Yeah. yeah. Everything's shut down period done. We, I, 
He had house concerts booked. We were going to go, and we were really excited because we were going to do the Southwest for the first time, twenty twenty one, and it it yeah. came. So uh, we pivoted, and and we're still pivoting. But I'm really hoping by um, this fall and uh, twenty twenty two, we're playing little houses or big houses. Well, look, I don't know what what Cincinnati is doing, but I mean, you know, now since I stepped out of California for these past few weeks, I mean, the mask is off. I don't even have one in my pocket and life is good. Everybody's business as usual. And, and there's, everything is, is good. But you know, in California, I mean, it's just, they, they, they friggin' tied us down and it sucked. It didn't hurt me because I was still a lone wolf. You know I mean? I was still doing what I was doing. And, and again, the, the whole entertainment industry had to kneel down to my terms. It's like they were doing my show. Uh, and, and so I'm used to it, I'm, but it's hard. Well, the thing, especially about a house concert is that you're really close. It is you, you're. Yeah. Like a baked potato gig. Yeah. When I'm singing those high notes, occasionally something comes out of my, my mouth. It's only natural <laughs> from deep inside my lungs. And yes, inside your lungs, and it's, yes. good. you're a giver. So, um, um, it's it's too soon for me to do that again. But. Okay, but the thing is, you're so let's go to this because uh, I hate it because we're we're gonna have to go here and I gotta have to wrap it up. But uh, here's here's a, I, this is this is this is what I want to do. Number one, you're still doing the fetters is cheap thing, right? Yes. Okay, so that's going on. And are you doing that weekly? When what? How's that working? Well, I, I'm not doing it. I, I'm on a break right now because I'm working up new material for the next season. The next season will start July 10th. Uh-huh. And okay. go through August 28th. How do people sign up for that? You don't have to sign up. Just um, go to robfetters.net and see the schedule. It's uh, Eastern time, 9 p.m. on Saturday nights. And I play okay. for, uh, I'm supposed to, play, I, I, I want to play for like, a, you know, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, but usually it ends up being 90 minutes or, or, or longer. Like this show. Yes. You know, it's like, I got an hour show. I do an hour 30. And uh, it's, yeah. It's just the way it is. It's, and it's okay. Cause nobody's telling me what to do at this point. They let me do what I want to do, but one day I'll have to tone it, you know, and I'll have, I'll actually have structure, but, but why start now? Okay. So you're doing better is cheap. This is what I want to do. And, and you tell me if you, if I'm out of my mind or whatever, I want you sometime down the road to do a mini betters is cheap feed through you to this show. And we'll just do, I'll just let you do a little music. Well, Does that I'll, make sense? I'll, I'll talk to uh, my technical team and see how to pull that off. So I mean, we'll talk about, I, I got it in my head already, but the thing is, it's just a matter of like, I, you know, d dude, you, I would love to have the people let you just do some of your music. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, just do, eight to 10 tunes, eight, eight tunes, you know what I mean? And because we're doing the talk, but it's, it's just another way of getting out there. But I think people would appreciate that. And well, I, yeah, well, if anybody hasn't seen it, you can see all the shows that we've done. And if you go to, again, to my website, there's like right. the, the shows watch. Um, if you're, if you, I thought the Halloween show was particularly funny and, and good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the show you watched was the last show of the of the season, and that that's why it was an anniversary because it, it marked a year. It was March twenty seventh. Yeah, you kissed your wife. I saw the whole damn thing. I, I kissed her feet. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Did a yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Bonnie's feet. You want to stay married? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just thought about this. I'm going. All you have to do is send a feed into that phone, you know, camera whatever and and that's all you have to do and you're doing what you normally do but just a mini mini show of what you do and we'll promote it from here because i'm sure that i'm reaching at least one or two people that have never seen you yeah, yeah. well I, yeah um let me make sure we can get it right we will talk about that i just i'm, I'm just like uh, software that kind of that talks to youtube um but no, it'd be just kind of different. You wouldn't have to go there. But anyway, we're going to talk about it off air. I'm going to call you tomorrow or something like that. Because I want to keep the quality up because that's like a big, a really big part of it that we've listen, listen. not sounding. We don't skimp. It's just a feed off. It's just a feed out of a mid. But anyway, we'll talk about that off there. Does but it go I, Does this show stereo? Yeah, it's all going to be good. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, he said. He said, it's going to be great. He said. Trust yeah, me, he said. Deal with me on it. Okay. Exactly. So, all right, Rob Fetters, 
the Raisins, the Psycho Dots, the Bears. I saw Adrian Blue doing the Sound and Vision tour, by the way, with David Bowie. And I was like eight to ten feet away from him. And I was going like this. Wasn't that the Bears thing? Oh. And he's like looking at me. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was right at the damn stage. And, and, and he's just looking at me and going, okay, you know, whatever. I know you don't know me, but I know Rob. Yeah. Anyway. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. I know it's late up there in uh, your neck of the woods uh, to come on and entertain my three or three million. It's, 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 it varies. But, yeah. But the thing is, I know that this is going to make a lot of people happy, especially in this area. And I kind of wanted to do that because I love the people in this area as well as the world. And this is the gift that keeps on giving. I know we, you know, we got off subject. We didn't talk all music. I don't really like talking all music because I, I want to get personal, but the thing is, I just felt after 35 years, we kind of had to touch on that musical history because that's what really started us off. And we, so. we didn't even get to the banana chocolate milkshakes at Jerry's Barbecue. I yeah, think. they ain't what they used to be, I hear. You know. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know, but shit. We, we, there's a lot of things that we didn't talk about and we agreed not to talk about. <laughs> you know, go there and, and verify that because they might, they might. Really? Banana chocolate. Yeah. Banana, a banana milkshake, chocolate milkshake at Jerry's. I think it might still be okay. Uh, you know what? I, I, somebody will probably tell me. I'm really surprised. Like I said, I got the best lurkers in the world. They like to watch. I wanted people Lurk. to ask, yeah. I wanted to ask questions. I wanted them to ask questions because I have phone lines. In L.A., we have phone lines that people can call in. But mm -hmm. I did not want to do this because I felt it would be like a family reunion, and I didn't want to get all lost up. It's like, hey, you remember so-and-so and – -so and we loved you, and we saw you drive by in the parking lot. Urinate on the fire. It's a hillbilly break dance. Well, that's right. That's good. That's a good thing to be. Uh, I, I like lurkers. I personally, I'm a skulker. I like to skulk around. Skulk. Never heard. Okay, I haven't thought. Yeah, my lurkers. I mean, I have the nicest lurkers in the world. They want to watch and wait for somebody else to call in. You know, and they just and then they'll talk. They'll they'll type in or, or send emails during the week, going, "Hey, Peter, I love your show, but I'm not going to call in." You know, and all that kind of stuff. Oh. But yeah, yeah. It's like oh, I don't know. I figure one day it'll all come together. Right now, though, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I swear, you know, again for for being you. Exactly. Uh, I am going to. We'll get together and we'll talk again. I'd like to again down the road. I'd like to do something a little bit different and mix that music up because there's you know music's a big part of my life and I've stepped away, but it's just a hiatus. And little by little, I'll be bringing it back more and more as I get more production money. But uh, right now, I figured out ways. You know, we we learn how to polish that turd. You know, and <laughs> so but 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 I thank you for for like you know just answering whatever the hell I was you know comes off my head to ask you. You know. <laughs> Polish the turd, Peter. Then it's like a shiny turd, chrome. Then to be the turd in the punch bowl. It is no, it, it is better. And yeah. and and as my buddy Steve Luca said, you know, uh, thank God you don't have a tempura scooper to you know get it out of the pool or something like that. But we're all good. Uh, again, people can find you on robfetters.net, correct? Yes, that's that's the that's the hub. The hub. Yeah. Ah, the hub. Okay. Well, my, the uh, I, I'm going to strongly urge my people, if you want to hear more on Rob Fetters and all his art, I love the videos. I mean, that video, uh, with, with, I'm going to I'm gonna play it one more time. We're going to go out with it tonight. But, but turn the ship around. I mean, real quick, all the different people all over the country, you can tell they're in different parts of the country. I loved it. So, some are my friends. Some people I, I haven't met, like the Naked Cowboy. Yeah. Um, was the director is a, the director knows him and uh that was a, a, the a, the morning that he he did that um i had to send him i was in my jammies and i had to send him a, a little uh video phone video of me playing the song so he could get the chords right right he, he wanted to do he wanted to do a quality performance all of the people they were all singing your words i mean in you know underwear on a march day oh no but that's his thing it was no, it wasn't March. It was December. But but that's what he does. The the thing is, they're all singing your song, you know. And it it, it just it, I just loved it. I, I just started getting more and more deeper into. It. I'm going. This tune grooves, and and again, so does many of your songs. But this was some of the newer stuff. And I'll tell you, the uh, I was somebody once, and I'm nobody now. That's a deep tune, you know. <laughs> Holy moly! It's like I'm going. Wow, that's my Rob. <laughs> yeah, it, it's supposed to be a comedy. Well, 
you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, but it is, but it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just, don't worry. I've got this. Yeah. Anyway, lots of great stuff. You can find Rob Fetters on robfetters.net. And I strongly suggest, and the Fetters is cheap. Everything's going to come up and it'll be on YouTube as well as this show. It'll be on LinkedIn, uh, all the Facebooks and this and that. And you can catch, but I mean, all that great music, he's got a stockpile of it. And I deeply appreciate you doing this. And, uh, and again, we're going to be in touch one way or another because I just I don't think things happen by accident. Whatever it was that sparked me to get you here, uh, uh, well deserved. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you may have second thoughts after the show. I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Um, thanks uh, for watching, everyone, and uh, stay healthy. Yeah. Well, that's all we can do, and 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 we can do the best we can do. We get up every day. Just I tell people, just be a decent human being, and you know, don't take no shit, but don't be an asshole. Uh, but that's it. All right, brother. Um, I'm going to finish up with a couple of little things and we're going to close this show with your video. And uh, so you can either sign off or hang around in the green room or do whatever you want. And, but again, I'm going to give you, you'll be getting a phone call in a day or so. Okay. Cause I, I got plans. <laughs> There's a green room. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Just, we'll just close your eyes. <laughs> Are there taco chips there? Uh, and, and, and brown M&Ms. Great. All right. So say goodbye to everybody. Bye everybody. There you go. All right, Rob. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. There you have it, folks. The infamous Rob Fetters. God bless him. Again, he knows what I do, and he still came on my show. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for all tuning in. Peter G. Show, Life of Peter G. Right here in the Gulf Coast. Next week, I have the rock, the White Tie Rock Ensemble. Those these guys are, you know, you can call them tribute bands or this and that, but they're really, really good. Oh, uh, and and I just want to again, they don't just do one thing; they constantly change it up. It takes a lot of work to do that, and they create an experience and they sell out. So I wanted to feature them because I, I, I it, it, you know, good music is good music. So I'm very, very grateful for them. But uh, Again, Rob Fetters, I'm getting all kinds of the, the my screens are going crazy now. Now you guys start texting and calling and, and uh, never fails. It never fails. Either way, I'm very, very grateful for Rob Fetters coming on. The history, I strongly suggest you go to robfetters.net and check him out. I mean, the stuff just grows on you. Maybe because, you know, we were young and influential and, you know, carefree, but the stories and the songs that, that these guys have put out, I mean, it, there's something out there for everybody uh, it, that, you know, the way they wrote. I mean, it just it just hit home in a lot of even if even if the story wasn't your story, it just it made a lot of sense. The songs. And I'm truly grateful for that. And uh, I thank him for that. It was good to go down memory lane a little bit. I hope you guys liked it, too. Don't forget to send all your comments and all that kind of stuff to the Peter G show. If you want to be on this show. Uh, you know, I strongly suggest you, uh, if you want to be a guest, just go to, uh, where are we? Be a guest and she'll go to info at Peter G show, send me an email or send them an email and it'll get to me and, and all that stuff. And, and we'll, you know, if you got something you need to talk about, that's worthy of, we talk about life and, uh, life is worth talking about. Life is worth living. So I, I strongly suggest you should, let, let's do it. Okay. That's it again. Uh, on behalf of myself, Bolt Energy, thank you, Bolt Energy, for allowing me to be here for the 14th million time. They know what I do, and they still sponsor me. So you got to love that. Anything else I might be missing? No, I don't think so. I think we're pretty much there. I don't want anybody to... Um... I'm blessed for being here. I really am. Uh, life, you know, there's everybody's gone through a lot of stuff, and I say that a, a, a lot. But as I just told Rob, you don't have to be an asshole in life. You know, you can. There's there's ways to go about go through life and just be a decent human being. Uh, be kind, but don't take a bunch of shit from people. But uh, let's do this all together. I appreciate everyone from that that puts up. You know, I know life is full of choices. You don't have to watch this show, but if you're gonna watch this show. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm really pushing that now. I never used to. That was in my storage bin, but I really want to start moving people over there. It's just easier for you to get to the show. They're in more in chronological order. The Facebook stuff, it gets buried between all the short clips we do and all that. And Facebook is just driving me nuts because they make up their own rules every week uh, about what you can and cannot do. And it just makes me crazier. 
So, uh, and, and as we keep changing, things are changing and evolving as they have been, but I'm grateful to be here. We've been on for quite a while and I continue to grow and I thank you for growing with me. But um, what are we going to do right now? Oh yeah, so we're going to leave. That's right. They're going, yeah, you got to leave. We went overtime as always. I'm going to finish out. We're going to do that uh, video with Rob Fetters. Uh, I love this. So why don't you just get ready, crank up the volume, and then we're going to get the hell out of here. But uh, I'm going to groove with you guys and l l let's just do this. All right.
Show.